No one planned it when Gatlinburg's arts and crafts community started in the beautiful Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee. In the early 19th century, a gathering of settlers formed a new community called the Glades. The Glades adjoined the towns of White Oak Flats, later known as Gatlinburg, Greenbrier, and nearby Pittman Center. The Glades was a subsistence farming community, so by necessity, locals applied their skills to make just about everything they needed for daily life. People of the Glades were weavers, quilters, broom makers, woodworkers, basket makers, carvers, and more. Nobody in the Glades really thought of themselves as a craftsperson or artist. They were just good at creating skillful items for everyday use. Some also made extras to trade with neighbors or after traveling two days on bad roads to sell in Knoxville. In the early 1900s, Gatlinburg was a small, humble settlement of two stores and six houses. The Burg was a hub for about 200 families living nearby. Attitudes changed in 1912 when Pi Beta Phi fraternity started a settlement school in Gatlinburg. This new school encouraged locals to preserve their traditional crafts and skills. Once locals learned of arts and crafts, they saw their old creations in a new, intriguing way. What before was just a useful pot, broom, chair, or basket now started looking like a valuable item. In 1925, the first actual craft shop was opened in downtown Gatlinburg by Allie Owenby, daughter of E.L. Reagan, a furniture maker from the Glades. In 1926, the aircraft shop opened. As more shops opened, the Glades and nearby communities began producing handmade items to sell. Visitors started arriving, new people who appreciated fine workmanship and real beauty and they were eager customers who would buy local handmade items. A cottage industry in the Glades grew in the 1930s as local arts and crafts won recognition outside the valley. Noah McCarter made and sold ladderback chairs and rocking chairs from a shed behind his long home. Next door, his sister, Mary Owenby, built chairs, did weaving, and made rifles. Laura Watson set up a loom on her front porch with a sign saying, Weaving for Sale. She built up a steady mail order business too, hiring neighbors and her daughters to weave. A number of women did weaving in their homes for the shops in Gatlinburg. And students of O.J. Matil, who taught woodworking at the settlement school, soon opened their own woodworking shops. Lee Ogle opened a broom shop on Glades Road. John Cowden was already selling his wood carvings to Hattie Ogle for her Bearskins craft shop in Gatlinburg. She convinced him to open his studio to the public so customers could visit the Glades and see him work. About then, members of many local founding families who still live today around the Glades got involved in producing arts and crafts. Their old, long-preserved family skills were revived and rekindled. In 1934, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park was established. The park brought highway access across the mountains from North Carolina, and better access meant more customers for local arts and crafts. Good customers now came regularly to the Glades to meet craftspeople and to shop for authentic crafts. The exact idea of the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts community occurred in 1937 when Carl Husky opened his village craft shop. People of the Glades all joined together as a community. They used a card rack to advertise their crafts and help visitors find their shops. Marion Mangrum, a local grocer who owned a printing press, fixed up the first map and rack card for them. So the arts and crafts community was finally born. In 1942, things changed. When World War II struck, most craft activity stopped. But after the war, the tourists returned. Local men came home and reopened their businesses. The Glades began growing again. 
Artisans were attracted to the glades by visiting the park and attending local craft shows. They saw the beauty of the mountains and potential customers for their creations. These artists and craftspeople, old and new, worked together to promote the shops and studios of the arts and crafts community. In 1978, the Great Smoky Mountains Arts and Crafts Association was officially formed with 28 charter members. Today in the Glades, many community members are third and fourth generation craftspeople or related family members of that original group. Today the community is an avenue of arts and crafts where visitors browse, chat, and see one-of-a-kind pieces created before their eyes. The Great Smoky Mountains Arts and Crafts community is the oldest and largest group of independent artisans and craftspeople in the United States. In 1999, the foundation was designated as an official project by Save America's Treasures. Now we must act. We must preserve this heritage of arts and crafts. See the largest group of artists and craftsmen in the area. Watch as they demonstrate their craft in their shops located around the 8-mile loop road. Shop in the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts community in Gatlinburg.